Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we're doing 5vc. The big one. It's the final stretch. Um, and it looks like the game wants me to go tactics. Uh, I'll go with this one. I think this one's quite nice. I like the symmetrical lance. I'll change- I'll change my color if, like, uh... If these- if I can. Because I didn't see any brutality weapons in there. We're gonna do something called scroll spoofing. So this is something I talked about in my iceberg video. But essentially, if you manipulate your scroll count, so if I have two in tactics and two in survival, then the game has no way of knowing, like, which color I'm actually maining. So I get, like, a slightly higher chance of getting dual stat scrolls in, in the second biome. A lot of elites. Oh, I should have taken out that Inquisitor. I do not believe you can access the 5BC biome in Dracula. Because <laughs> if you beat Dracula, that's, like, the ending of the game, right? Okay, got the crits. Always like to see that. Yeah, if you get the crits, it's it's like over. I am really hoping when the new patch comes out. I think they they're probably it's it's probably coming soon, right? Because I think what I'll do this time, I might do like a live reaction to the patch notes if you guys want that. I think, uh, is there a secret in Toxic Sewers here? There is. Spite. This is an interesting one. Uh, I think we're going with this. Um, but the reason why I picked, you know, I want to pick, like, a item from the room is that it's, like, higher quality. Like, just, ha just from having that S tier quality, it, it makes it a lot better. And obviously, there's not too much incentive if you already have, like, the majority of the, uh, the forge filled out. But if you don't like me, then it's really, really valuable. It creates a lot of incentives to do that. And with the crossbow, at least with a heavy crossbow, you want to be a little careful. Uh, there is, like, a small wind-up time. So, you don't want to get caught off guard. Legendary heavy cross is busted. I actually don't know what it does. I feel like there's just so many cool legendary items. Um, but like, there's a difference between like really busted versus unique. Because I know some of the legendary items, they're unique, but they're not that busted. At least the weapons that I consider to be top tier are weapons that, you know, they, they might not hit as hard, but what they do is very, very unique. We might be picking up a cocoon here, just to add a little bit more defense. Is it okay to choose a skill that doesn't match your highest scroll count? I would say it's okay if it doesn't do, like, offensive capabilities. So if you're picking something like Ice Armor, uh, I think it's totally fine. Because you're not picking Ice Armor because it reduces your, uh, What's it called? Attack? Or, uh, I guess it doesn't do any damage, right? You're mainly picking Ice Armor because of the utility. But if your skill does do damage, and you expect it to da uh, do damage, then it might be a little awkward. Uh, in some of my showcase videos, I have picked uh, Wolf Trap. I picked Wolf Trap when I was doing the Baseball Bat showcase. Uh, even though, you know, Baseball Bat is red, and then Wolf Trap is tactics in the survival. But mainly, I just needed Wolf Trap to, like, root down the enemies. At least the end game bosses, that's what I needed it to do. If it can do that, then I'm good. Uh, because obviously, Wolf Trap by itself doesn't do too much damage. Uh, Philip says, do you hit the gym? I do. I go twice a week. I was thinking of going three times a week during the summer. Because uh, at least in my local gym, there's this deal where it was like 100 Canadian dollars, and then you can go whenever you want. It's been, it's definitely a little scary the first time you go. Because like you, you don't know what you're doing, and then all these like muscular guys are just hanging out at the gym. Uh, but it's just something that you get used to, just like everything in life. But speaking of Ice Armor, I think... Uh, we we're on this previously. Uh, when they introduced the Foresight card, I could not believe what I was seeing. Because I remember seeing it for the first time. So Foresight originally, what it did is it gave you indefinite invincibility until you got hit. And then it would refresh like every, I think, 12 seconds. Because it's basically an ice armor that doesn't expire. Because the concept by itself is so busted. And what is this? Or shield, that's kind of useless, but okay. What's your favorite game other than Dead Cells? Uh, depends if you want, like, a roguelike favorite game. Favorite roguelike other than Dead Cells? I would say, like, Finding of Isaac, just because it that's the game that introduced me to uh, the roguelike genre. 
Uh, favorite RPG? I played. I thought Witcher 3 was really good. I think one of my favorites of all time has got to be Fallout New Vegas. Because it, it just feels like, you know, there's so much choice involved. Because a lot of games these days, they give you choice, but it's not actually choice, it's like the illusion of choice. Because in Fallout New Vegas, if you want to be, uh, if you want to work for the government and then, you know, try to reform the system by making everything a democracy again in the post-apocalyptic world, you can do that. But if you want to become a slaver and you sell your, you sell your companion into slavery, you can also do that. So it's just, it's a degree of freedom that I just don't see very often in gaming. Oh no. <laughs> Bad idea. But it is showing its age. Like a lot of older games, they don't really do support for newer uh, consoles or generations anymore. So you do have to do a little bit more finessing to get the games to work. Have you played Undertale? I have. Uh, love the soundtrack. It took me a little while to play it, because I remember when it came out, there was like this... Like everyone was playing it, you know, all the YouTubers were playing it, it was all the rage. So I, I was kind of like, I was a couple of years late to the party, but I have played it. I remember the, the, the Sans fight gave me quite a, quite a lot of trouble. But I imagine like most people struggle with that fight as well. I remember when I beat it, I was at like one health. <laughs> One health point. What are your opinions about games becoming more expensive because of graphic improvement? Well, I understand that like a lot of games are becoming, what, $70 these days? I don't have a problem with the price increase. Like, I understand that uh, games traditionally have always been $60 since like the 1980s. So, like, for the longest time, it's been $60. So, like, I think if you account for inflation, I, I would say it is definitely valid if you change it to $70. The only problem is your game has to be worth $70. Like if you just rush out, you know, like a EA yearly football or soccer title and you, you uh, price it for 70, you know, I don't think it's worth $70. But if you say something like Elden Ring, then, you know, I would absolutely play Elden Ring for $70. But honestly, um, I understand that, you know, graphics have been improving, but what I really personally look out for is not really graphics it's what it's the style because we've reached the point where pretty much you can make you can make games almost lifelike uh, but i think what you can still expand on is the creativity and the style you can't really do that with style and the thing is when you see games being marketed and you you see them marketed for its graphics it's good marketing material because you can see the graphics right away you just see like a screenshot of the game and you can see th the graphics because if you think to yourself, oh, this game has such good graphics, then, you know, the game itself must also be really good. It's basically the, it's something called the halo effect, which is something I learned in psychology. Uh, it's that if something looks, if someone or something appears very attractive, you're more likely to associate better traits with it. Uh, but the thing is, if you look at stuff like sound design, uh, story, sound effects, like uh, attention to detail, those aren't things you can see just with a glance. You actually have to play them to, uh, to understand it. So you have a lot of games where they look really, really good, but they have like no attention to detail into them. Like I would say an example of this was a uh, was Far Cry 5. I played it when I came out in like 2018 or something. The graphics look really good. Uh, but the attention to details, like if you can burn trees, if you can explode cars, uh, those were things that you could do in previous Far Cry games, but not in 5. Because it, it looks like eye candy, but there's not too much depth into it. Her stress. Okay, we're doing it. Oh, actually, we can clear out my curse with this. See ya. <laughs> Lipple suction. Alright, give me the suck. We actually need the cell, so this is actually pretty good. Porky pack. That's the, that's the useless one. I'm just, I'm just kidding. It's not useless. Persona Five Strikers. Uh, interesting. I played the original Persona Five on uh, PlayStation Four. I was surprised because uh, Persona Five is actually on PS3. You could play it on PS3. Uh, at least like I bought it in 2018, the summer of 28, not 2018, 2020, because that's the year when the pandemic happened. And I actually bought it for eighty dollars, because that's you know how much games are priced here, at least. Um, but one thing I was curious about is I was thinking of transitioning more into doing like video essays on my channel. There's a bunch of topics I want to talk about. Whoa, okay. 
Oh, okay. What is this? I don't think I've ever seen this layout before. That's so weird. Okay. Uh, well, if anyone here is struggling with 5 BC, hopefully I can show off uh, just like the the general mindset how you need to go about to approaching it. And then we'll also show off some of the 5 BC content. Uh-oh. And then against like uh, those protectors, you can just lure them away because they do have an effective range. Uh, what's your favorite music in video games? I kind of listen to everything because if you ask me, I would say music can really elevate like a uh, game's visuals or the feel. Because if you ask me like, what do you think of Elden Ring music? I would say, you know, it it's good. It's well composed, but I wouldn't say it's anything like special. Uh, but if you look at something like the Yakuza series, I played that. I played the entire, I think like seven or eight games. Uh, the way they do music, especially like in Yakuza 0, they time, they basically time like the, the hype portions of the music to the actual fight. So it really makes you feel, you really feel pumped up for the fight. You know, a lot of games do this. There's also like Devil May Cry, uh, most other fighting games. I would say my favorite soundtrack of any video game of all time would have to be uh, Nier Automata. I don't know if anyone's played that game. It's uh, the, the story can be a little weird. Yeah, I would say Hollow Knight soundtrack is really good too. We could try Necromancy. I've never really tried it before. <laughs> I like how I like how I picked Necromancy and I just see like two completely conflicting <laughs> conflicting sentences in the chat. <laughs> Does it actually scale with like full health? Can you can you restore to full health with it? Oh. Oh, I thought I was gonna get hit there. I remember someone said Doom music. Uh I know there's there's a bunch of soundtracks in my playlist. Uh, but recently, I've been getting into rhythm games. You know, it's it's kind of hard not to have a good soundtrack when your entire focus of the game is, you know, music. Uh, I saw this one, it's on sale right now, it's called Rhythm Doctor. It's really unique. I recommend playing it. I re oh, what is this? Uh, the gimmick is very simple. There's You only have to press one button. You press the space bar for every seventh beat of a song. It's really hard for me to explain, and it's one of those games where you can't say anything spoiler, or otherwise, like, the entire game gets ruined. So think something like Outer Wilds. Outer Wilds, amazing game, uh, but you can't say anything about it, otherwise it will spoil, like, the, the premise. I actually have Crypt of the Necrodancer. Uh, they recently just did a- well, not recently, but they do have a huge content update. Mushroom dice? Oh, I might get hit? Okay. You always want to be careful if you're backed into a corner like that. And this gives me three stats. That's really good. Okay. Oh, did Terraria do a Dead Cells crossover? I wonder what they added. Oh, okay. I knew I was going to get hit there. That's really stupid. Dude, how did you even target me? I'm like all the way over here, man. Yeah. Dude, he was like completely off screen. I have no idea how he targeted me. I don't know if anyone here plays music games, uh, rhythm games. What's really interesting about them uh, is that it, the progression is purely horizontal. Uh, as far as I know, there's no upgrades. You don't, you don't like make playing rhythm games easier. It's just purely your talent. Because like, what are you gonna what are you gonna say to those that that can't really play rhythm games well? Just you could just say something like, "Oh, just just hit the notes better." But it's really fascinating because that's probably the only only genre of games where I would say the progression is purely horizontal. Okay, this is this might be a little controversial, but I don't think Geometry Dash is a rhythm game. I would say it's an arcade game with rhythm game elements. You could basically make a Flappy Bird level that just has music playing in the background. Like, it has the potential to be a rhythm game, but it doesn't have to be. I meant music in general. Oh, I, I like the EDM music. I used to be a pretty big fan of um, Monster Cat, which is like an EDM label. Their new stuff, it's... I'm not really a fan of their new stuff. Well, they haven't really been... I haven't been a fan of their stuff since like the 2017s, if I'm gonna be honest. 
Uh, but like 2014, 2015, Monster Cat music, really, really good. I don't know if it's just me, uh, but I feel like in that era, in 2015-ish, that was when EDM was at its peak. Which, it really helps because most rhythm games I play features uh, EDM music. You should try out A Dance of Ice and uh, Fire and Ice. I, do, I have it, but I'm not that good at it. I play like the first, I think, eight worlds. It's one of those games where the official levels are easy enough, but once you get to the user-generated ones, you feel like a, you feel like a noob again. Uh, if you're wondering about the roguelikes, the other roguelikes that I play, uh, for I think it was 10,000 subscribers, I did a a week where I uploaded runs from the other roguelikes that I play. Um, I think on that list I had Enter the Gungeon, Nuclear Throne, Binding of Isaac. Hades, and then Hades. I think there was one more. I, can't, I don't remember which one it was, though. Like, you see how important it is to have the S rank item? L like, this one's rank 9, but you can still see that the DPS it does is not as high as mine. I feel like the malaise rework has become almost irrelevant. Um, I would say I definitely feel it, but I, I will also agree that it is less relevant depending on your build and playstyle. Uh, if you're playing a faster build, because obviously if you have the malaise, it fills up over time. So it wants you to um, it wants you to play faster. So if you have a faster build like tactics, you I would say you would be at a slight advantage. But that's not really saying that you can't play fast with survival. You can obviously do that too. Uh, but it really... Someone said recycle the food. I'll do that here. I don't think I'm picking this up. It's just not worth it. But it really puts into consideration like how much damage a weapon does because that's when it kind of starts to matter. Because if your weapon doesn't do that much damage, uh, it it's it automatically means you're gonna stay. You're gonna spend more time inside the biomes, which means you're gonna get more malaise, which means it kind of snowballs into like a harder problem. Is it better to focus on one substat or focus on whatever gives you more health? Um, on default, I will personally. Focus on whichever one gives you more health, but there can be exceptions. Uh, like, if you're running an off-color mutation that, you know, that really scales with an off-color, then you, you could definitely, like, invest more into one color. It's a lot of damage, huh? Come here. I knew you were gonna do that. Hello? Okay. Yeah, it's usually the tentacles that get you. Come here. Yes. I want to see those big crits. Yes, right into my trap. Come on. You can actually uh, parry the tentacles. <laughs> that was a close one. It was like right up, up to my face, but he got intimidated when I killed one of his tentacles. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> we are melting. Um, I need to find the key. Where's the key? Oh, we haven't found it yet. But yeah, having piercing on this is really, really nice. Uh oh. <laughs> Almost lost it there. I could have died just there. <laughs> really goes to show how quickly something can go wrong. Uh, magic missiles drops from Arbiter. There's a bunch of weapons I haven't unlocked. I don't remember how you get kill rhythm. I will love that for this build. It's definitely, if you have kill rhythm, definitely use it. If you're playing heavy crossbow, that is. Do Malay's enemies count towards your kill streak? I actually wasn't checking. I do know that it does count for clearing curses. So if you really, really wanted to, at least on 5 BC, you could just sit in the corner and wait till enemies spawn and just kill them. Yes, they do count? Nice. Uh, curse chest. Okay, we're gonna check the map. Very important. Don't want to rush into curses too fast. You check the map if there are any traps in case you gotta go through them. Because it's it's really, really risky if you want to go through traps while you are cursed. 
So, if I, if this was the only way forward and I just took the curse, you know, it's kind of awkward because I really don't want to take damage in the trap, right? Because if you do take damage, it's not exactly, like, it is something you could have avoided, is what I'm trying to say. I don't want to mess with that guy. That's a little too much, too much for me to handle. Come up here. Yeah, if you're cursed, you don't want to deal with elites. Well, I guess you can. You just have to be pretty confident, you know? We're dead. Okay. First lifted. Well. Um, oh, I'm going to get hit. Yep. You really got to be careful of that. Oh, there's two food items. Nice. That's even better. Um, well, actually, I could just save the food for, for the shop because there's a food shop here. And it's, it's in here. Uh, the one that says two boss cells, that's always the food shop in Graveyard. Is it actually better? No. <laughs> you can you can see like just the difference between the damage. Uh, well, if you're having trouble with the bosses, fortunately, there is the training room. Yeah, you can use it to a much better degree now. Uh, I'll put this in the backpack, just in case. That looks really nice. I think I want... If I... I mean, Nutcracker doesn't work on Giant, right? So that's... That's one thing that's a little bad. Well, you know, I heard they... They're putting, like, uh, some car companies, they're putting, um... The acceleration of your car behind a subscription. So you have to pay a subscription to accelerate your car. <laughs> And I think it was Tesla that did this, uh, but they made it so that you need to pay a subscription to use heated seats. <laughs> it's bizarre, because the hardware is in the car, like, you could use it. But <laughs> they just locked it behind the thing. Just jailbreak your car? Well, if you do that, your warranty's void, so <laughs> you're definitely not getting any repairs. <laughs> oh my god, what is going on anymore? Obviously, they don't want you to do that. They don't want you to own anything. If you jailbreak your car, uh, which I'm sure you could reverse engineer it, uh, but you're definitely not getting any... Your, your warranty's done. You are not getting insurances on your car. <laughs> Imagine, like, in the future, they... They pay... They lock, like, being able to overclock your GPU behind a subscription. Imagine if they actually did that. I could make the switch right now. If I'm switching to Nutcracker, I gotta make the switch right now. Uh, the only problem is Nutcracker doesn't really work in the Giant. And I would say if you... I don't know if I want to... Nah, I don't know. That's actually really lucky. I think I've seen like three dual stash scrolls this game. Can you make Giant bleed or poison? I believe you can. Um, but Giant cannot be rooted, stunned, or frozen. Uh, I have definitely not been focusing that much on the Forge. That's Ice Armor. Oh my god. I only have like a little bit because I I mainly just been focused on unlocking items. Uh, but I think if you're at 5 BC, if you're just progressing naturally, you could probably have a little bit more filled out than me. Uh, but luckily for the Legendary Forge, it's not locked behind achievements, so you could unlock it through any means that you want. Uh, but you but you could definitely dedicate some runs into farming the Forge. That's that's possible. I've seen people do that. Nutcracker is gonna be busted. I'm sure it is. Uh, I'm gonna say- oh, uh, I'm not gonna do it. I was gonna- th I was thinking of getting ice armor, but I was like, nah. But hey, whatever. Uh, I mean, it's okay, but it's not that good. Yeah, I tried root- like, you see how I tried to root? Root the eyeball, but it's not gonna let me. I think we can get half health. We might. Nice, okay. He's gonna throw hands. Yeah. Oh wow, I got the poison on this. That's really nice. Oh, you don't see that attack very often. 
I think he's done. There you go. I mean, I'm sure it would have been more busted if I could actually root him, but ah well. Uh, so we're going into throne room with 34 stats. That is actually really high. Uh, I think the highest I've ever gotten was 37. Uh, but if you don't speak, if you don't skip High Peak Castle, you would have gotten two more dual stat scrolls and two scroll fragments. So, but like honestly, you know, you still have to go through a lot of stuff to get there. <laughs> He's just getting stunned. No, don't do that. Thank you. You gotta get those parries in. You get stunned. Oh, he's, I think he's gonna explode. Alright, shoot. Kind of flaked out at the last second there, but we got it. Okay, 5 VC. I'm greedy. I'm greedy, but this is so good. The plus 20%. Oh my god. So this is the Astro Lab. Uh, you can't hear the soundtrack, but um, the soundtrack is actually, I would say, like one of my favorites in the game. But obviously, this is 5 PC content, so if you don't want to be here for this, you know, you don't have to be here. Oh my God, that's the Thunder Shield. Imagine locking like all the good stuff behind 5 PC. Okay, but to be fair, if I don't use the cells now, um, you know, I'm not gonna be able to use them because, you know, something happens at the end of this biome. Like, I wanna say Nutcracker is good if you have. You know what? I'm gonna heal. This might not be a good idea, but whatever. But it's the final stretch of the game, so I kinda wanna concentrate here. Uh, those guys, I don't know if they can be rooted, they, they certainly can't be stunned. I don't know if I want to deal with that. Uh, second key. So there's two keys in Astrolab. You gotta get both of them to reach the end. Okay, there it is. My savior. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Yeah, it just happened to spawn, uh... That's very unfortunate. Uh, this is the final stretch. You gotta be a little careful here. It's mainly just ascending the tower. Well, I guess like descending and then ascending. So you go to the bottom here. Uh, there's a secret passage. You know, it says secret zone, but the thing is you, you kind of have to go in there. And then for these librarians, you can actually just do this. You're not up, you can run up against the wall and then they'll just like, they'll be really confused. Well, I prepared the best that I could. So you get two keys, and then you can unlock to you can unlock the door to the last exit. And I know, like, I missed the Sonic Carbine Blueprint, but I really don't want to risk it because I just don't have a lot of health. Let's get it. Who is this? Oh my God! It was the collector this entire time. A lot of cells. You're just gonna give it to him? You're gonna give us a weapon? The Panacea. Cure of all diseases. Does something happen if you have no cells? Well, first of all, I'm not sure that's possible. Because there's no way to cash in your cells after the Astrolab. But, like, I'm pretty sure he just- he does the animation where he takes them anyways. Alright, 
Uh, he has this. Uh, his he has his anime moment when he does that. Okay, let's go. That that thing is really annoying. Like that move right there. Okay, first heal. Did that miss? I think that missed, right? That's a shame. Eh, it does decent damage. That's the second heal? I think that's the second heal. And then he's going to unlock a bunch of new moves from here on out. Including that one. Third heal. We are almost to the finishing line. Uh, but it's much easier if you have a shield. I mean, you can like anticipate a lot of his moves, to be honest. So, for example, I'll, I'll probably stay like here because you can you can get trapped by this. You gonna do that? Thank you. We got him! Wait, what? That actually shows up? That actually shows up in the game. Oh, I think it's only my version of the game that it shows up. Okay. Well, we, <laughs> we got him. We got him with one flask. And him. Don't worry. Nah, you're dead. I love killing stuff. Uh, okay, nine, uh, 59 minutes for one run. You know, I definitely thought, reflecting back, this was definitely a little bit, uh... It's a little dicey, especially at the end there, but we pulled through, you know. Moral of the story is just have a shield. <laughs>